You know, I think it's very important to, to do your history. If the, mother, the mother line is so important to do your history of the mother line and really when you're looking, when you do buy your mare, be really sure that you, you, you there, there has, I've never had a perfect horse yet and we've got three or four hundred. So it's really important to look at the uh, negatives in your horse and make sure you pick a stallion that hopefully has, has got a positive where your mare's got a negative and there's so many good stallions out there now you can use frozen semen, there's no, you know, that's where you need to spend time. Go and look at the stallion, sometimes on a picture you can't see, is he very correct, you know, how his limbs. We need to breed sound horses, so they need to be correct. If a mare hasn't competed, we would use her because she's produced a top sport horse for us. So then, that's the main thing, if she's bred a, a top horse, then she's obviously a good breeder. So if a mare hasn't bred, she needs to have good bloodlines because bloodlines repeat themselves, you know, it's come from good mother lines all the way through. Or she needs to have got a good record jumping Grand Prix or one sixes herself. And you would hope then with good bloodlines she's also going to repeat that. You know, I think I would say probably 75% is your mare. You know, we time and time again we're using different stallions on the same mares and those mares are the ones that are producing. So your mare is very important. And also, and also, yes, we can, be, we can be as thorough as we can, we can look at all the books, we can do all this. We also need a little bit of lucky dust as well. You know, once we've got that, we've bred that uh, raw material, then we need to nurture it to make it, for us at the Billy Stud, to make it into be the best we can possibly make it, whether that's commercially as the best that we can produce it, when's the best time to sell it, um, and how much time we invest in that haul. So, with every, you know, that comes down to um, rideability, scope, range, soundness. So from that we can judge how long we keep it to, to really to make, uh, to make the right business decisions. With, but with sort of getting on close to 100 pregnancies, we would evaluate our, our, we probably wouldn't evaluate them until they get to three years old. Then we would get them in, handle them, loose jump them, start to, judge whether, how much talent they've got, movement, are they going to be a nice event horse, are they going to be a top jumper, are they going to make an amateur horse and then judge how much time to put into them and when to market them. Um, I, th I think it's really important to look at a stallion, you know, there's some stallions that produce Grand Prix horses or nothing, they don't make amateur horses, so you're looking at a pot of gold or nothing and I think if you're only breeding one or two mares you need to go for a safe stallion that breeds a lot of saleable horses, even if they're amateur horses and the odd Grand Prix horse is more important for you to have that benchmark that you're going to make a profit from what you breed anyway, whereas if you breed to some of these stallions they say it's a pot of gold or nothing because they produce difficult horses that aren't amateur horses, so you need to really look what that stallion produces. You know, I think it's something we've ever, we have a lot of pleasure from, you know, yes we're looking at commercial aspects. There's a lot of land out there that isn't being used. We've got a lot of grass and that's basically all we need in a good mare and time. So yeah, you know, enjoy it and if you do it well it can be commercial.